Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. I like it. Hello, welcome along to the podcast. Guy Sharon and Clint here. Um, I'm pushing buttons. Guy and Sharon are fighting over a copy of New Idea. Sharon wants to read the salacious gossip, and Guy Williams wants to read a story about himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite interesting, though. I have just completely sold out. I think. Well, you did. You kind of have to do it. It's a story about John and Ben. So they're like, yeah, "Guy, get in this story." I like publicity. I really like it, publicity and exposure. But it's weird when you think about when I started. Um, doing stamp comedy, like I would have gone, oh, I'd never do a woman's magazine. That's for losers. Now here I am grinning, like a Cheshire like a, cat, like a sellout from Selloutsville. I feel, I feel a bit bad about it. What is your message uh, now, as twenty-six-year-old Guy Williams, who works on the edge, yeah. um, to twenty-one-year-old Guy Williams, who was a rebel and an anti-establishmentarian from I was, Wellington? I wasn't a rebel, but I was. Um, Certainly a lot smarter than I am now. I've gone a lot dumber as I've gotten older. Yeah. Yeah? Because I used to read. At university, they force you to read, so you kind of have a minimum level of intelligence. I've really gone very rapidly downhill. I found the trick to um, them forcing you to read at school. Do you know Mm. what it was? Mm. What? Audio books. Oh, genius. Yeah. And how does that make you feel? Life. <laughs> Sharon I feel like hasn't is, been I listening at all. I feel like it's a, a counselling session and I'm just like, how did that make you feel? How did that, how did you, that make you feel you that you don't read, read now? <laughs> you were just reading the new idea. Did you get any new ideas from the new idea? Um, <laughs> my, well, I, one thing, another question. Uh, it's a two-page article about John and Ben at hey, how starting back this Friday. We tease us and for the end of the podcast. Nah. Reveal this now? Yeah. My favourite part about it is that they have deleted all of your quotes out of it. There's a whole <laughs> section for your ex-girlfriend, and John and Ben are all talking through it, and all you get is, we'll blackmail her at the very last line. Is that all I've got in there? How does that make you feel? I'm going to read that. I'm going to bloody read that. <laughs> you read that, we're going to play the podcast. Are you reading an article about yourself? What a vain guy. <laughs> Here's today's show. You've changed. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. It's too late to Guy Sharon and Clint's awesome apologies. I'm sorry. Your chance straight after the weekend on a Monday. It's the first thing we do every Monday. Your chance to apologise for something. Clear the air. Use the airwaves for good. I would like to kick off the apologies this week, guys. Yep. I would like to apologise to a guy that I met at the Eminem concert on the in the line to the Portaloos. <laughs> yeah. Um, who dropped something on the ground, and so I was going to let him uh, use my torch, but then he told me that he'd lost his like thing of pee, and that's what he was oh. looking for. Oh. And I was like, well, no, you can't use the torch then. <laughs> and he was like, oh, and he got really angry at me. Of course he did, because he's I, <laughs> But I was just like, whoa, 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 I'm not going to help you find that. <laughs> um, but it was really nice, because then after that, he offered to uh, wipe my bum in the bathroom. Oh, so, no. What? Yeah. Where was this Eminem? That was at the Eminem show, yeah. We, uh, we, ooh, ooh. Things got weird. I said no, guys. You don't really need, Good on you. You don't really need to apologise for that, by the way. That guy, that guy <laughs> should apologise to me, I feel. But he said he really liked our show, so I was like, yes, <laughs> wait. <laughs> People love our show. All right, let's take some apologies. <laughs> oh, 800 The Edge. Rosie, what do you want to apologise for? Um, well, I went to the Lantern Festival with my mates. I went both nights, but... Um, well, basically, my friend got really thirsty. So we were just walking through the food stalls, and I saw some, like, bottles of drink, and I kind of just took one, and... <gasps> I feel really bad because I didn't pay for it. And then all my mates were like, oh, my God, Rosie, you're so bad. But, like, oh, my gosh, I just feel really bad. Rosie, 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 if you feel bad for it, stop laughing about it. (laughs) I can't because it's so stupid. No, you're a naughty girl. Do you feel better now? from someone. Do you feel better now that you've apologised, Rosie? Yes, I do. Well, (laughs) good. Now, don't do it again. Next time, just pay $2 for a drink. Yeah, I will. (laughs) I drank a coconut at the Lantern Festival. Was it good? Did it was you? Amazing. You've changed. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fancy Clint boy drinking his coconuts. You've changed, man. I know, guys. I'm pretty much paleo now. Okay, um, give Hashtag us a... Hashtag paleo. It's not just paleo. <laughs> Can I just say that awesome apologies isn't just a way to get out of feeling guilty about theft? Yes. Oh, please, yes. <laughs> Sharon and Clint's awesome apologies. I'm sorry. So we do awesome apologies every Mondays where you can apologise for something that you did over the weekend. And I think one of my favourite ones has come through on the text machine. I'd like to apologise to my niece for taking her scooter on Saturday night because <laughs> I didn't want to walk home in five-inch heels. I feel her pain. And I Every tried woman. to bring her back, but she didn't answer. But I feel that pain. I wish I had a scooter that fit in my handbag. It'd be awesome. And we've got Liam on 0800 The Edge. What do you want to apologise for, Liam? 
The only one I apologise to the guy on the bike I almost took out with opening my door and not oh, shooting my door. Oh, yep, yep. Liam. Good way to kill someone like that. Yeah, well, at least, yeah. at least it wasn't texting and driving. That's the main thing. Georgia, what would you like to apologise for? Um, to the guy at the town ball that he grabbed my ass when I was walking out and I turned around and punched him. Oh, I don't really th- you don't really need to apologise yeah, for that. That's... Maybe you didn't need to punch him, but yeah. he shouldn't have been touching your bum in the first place. I felt a little bit bad, but he did laugh. Well, that's good, as long as he laughed Where, afterwards. Where'd you hit him? Um, I just kind of turned around, and the first thing I saw was his ribs, so... Bam, got him. All right, I That'll think... That'll teach him. Thanks for your call. Oh, 100 The Edge, Bull of here. What would you like to apologise <laughs> for? Uh, I'd just like to apologise, because um, when I got wasted on the weekend... Um, I had a bit of a heart touch to my friend, and I told him that I slept with his girlfriend last oh. year. Oh, oh, oh. And now we're no longer friends. No, of course you're not friends. You slept with his girlfriend. Yeah. Are you, are you I mean, so- like, it was a year ago, so... <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that we could pull it off and that he'd fl- see the funny side of it, but... What's, what's the well. funny, what's the funny yeah, side of it? Yeah. Oh, the, the situation was pretty funny. Because, like, he was in the other room, and... Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was pretty... Oh, it was pretty oh, like, when you think about it, it was pretty rough, but... No, it is really I mean, rough. Jesus. Yeah. No, the one thing I want to know about this bull of is that... Are, are they still together? Yeah. Um, well, I haven't been able to talk to him... I haven't been able to talk to her either, But so up until, up until the weekend... I don't actually know. Up until on the weekend when you told him, were they together? Yeah, they were. Oh, man. Oh, you're a, you're a heartbreaker. Well, do you feel better now that you've said sorry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel pretty good. I know he'll be listening, so this probably isn't going to help the situation. You wanna, did but, you want to use your real name yeah. then, Bolafesi? I'm, I'm just clearing my conscience. Right now, right now, just say sincerely down the phone, uh, I'm sorry to, and just give him a nickname or something. I'm sorry to Jamie. Uh... I didn't mean to, and well, you did mean I hope, to. I hope that uh, one day we can uh, we can put all, all this to rest and uh, just get over it. Isn't that nice? Thanks for apologising, mate. Yeah, cheers. All right, good. There's the apologies. Those are awesome apologies. Every Monday we do them. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the urge. Old Shaz dog over there has got a bit of a crush on someone who's not her husband. <laughs> a her, bit of a crush. It's no secret though, is it? Like we can bring this up. No, definitely not. You can bring it up. I've been named and shamed about this multiple times. It's King Richie. Richie McCaw. He's going to be my second husband. The head boy of New Zealand. <laughs> do, you know, do, you, do you know what, though? Is that this story's actually got him back to him because, A, when JJ McDonald interviewed him, they pulled me in and I was like, balls of steel. I was just yelling at him. I was like, I love you. When you give up rugby, I'm going to be waiting for you. And That's I, how you get a guy. Yeah. And then my uh, husband interviewed him on his show and he told him the same thing. And so we had this horribly awkward moment at the airport on Friday ah. because we were standing there <laughs> talking and I didn't think I'd see anybody oh, that gosh. I knew. So I was wearing rangy ass track pants, had no makeup on, had a massive pimple on the side of my face Looked like an absolute mess. Hadn't even brushed my hair or washed it. You Probably still look- would have looked like beautiful to me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. Love you. And that's why you're my third husband. <laughs> but the worst thing was... is that Bryce, having husbands this, if you going through that many. <laughs> this guy, like, walked past, and um, I saw Bryce be like, Oh, hey, bro, how's it? And I turned around and locked eyes with Richie McCaw. Wow. And I looked, honestly, the worst I've ever looked ever. Then I went to the bathroom and rea- realised not only did I look that bad, but I had some McMuffin on my face <laughs> that my husband hadn't told me about. <laughs> and Richie McCaw looked at me and was like, oh, God. And he looked like I had broken a restraining order. Because he had just heard <laughs> about what an absolute psycho I am. And he just kind of said hi to Bryce and just pretty much ran away. You um sound like a real treat when you go to the airport. Oh well, you was, sound like to me if I was, was airport early. security, I would crack down on your flights of security because you don't look like you <laughs> would be able to afford a flight. So I'd be like, she's obviously not here to fly anywhere. <laughs> it was really really early, and I had to get up at five thirty in the morning, so I was not making an effort for nobody. Did Richie look good? Oh, he looked like an absolute dream. What was he wearing? He was just wearing like casual clothes, and I I think that he must have heard about the time I ranted about how he'd started dressing like a dad and wearing jeans yeah. and sneaks. Where's a lot of dad jeans? He, he wasn't wearing dad jeans, he was wearing nice jeans and nice shoes. 
Was he wearing like an Adidas tracksuit like normally though on the upper top? Oh, no, he did have an Adidas top on though. Of course he yeah. did. Yeah, he yeah. did. He yeah. would just park the Ford outside of the Air New Zealand Koru parking. And he was also wearing a look of all fear. Black. He would have had his Rexona deodorant on and his Barker's suit in his bag and drinking an up and go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> an up and go, a Powerade and a Steinlager all at the same time. And he ran into a shop to buy a wedding present. Damn, ruined it. Okay, um, <laughs> well, good for you, mate. Good that you 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 that, that much further away from Richie. Richie, if you're listening. Just please know I don't always look like that babe And when we get married I'm going to be wearing makeup every day Like Gwen Stefani does for Gavin Rossdale Bryce, Bryce would have been stoked Pushing yourself further and further he away was just from more, He was just more excited that he got a hello <laughs> Oh that's awesome Guy Sharon and Clint On the edge Some people Unlike me I, I don't know this because I am um, single and lonely But other people who are <laughs> successful in love um, occasionally when you're in a relationship you come up with like a slightly cute name for someone some people would call it a pet name even the other day logging off finishing the show Bryce came to pick up Shaz dog we call her Shaz dog that's our adorable that's pet our name. pet name for her because she's our Shaz dog Aww, give me a pet Bryce had some Stop. kind of interesting names for Sharon can you share with the? Pe- I don't want to put no, you on the spot too much here. You can't bring out this. St- this is this is. It's stuff. a little bit personal. You guys are falling out of the trust tree. Hey, it's this is a trust <laughs> thing, and <laughs> you're falling out of the no, trust tree. No, but everyone, tree. everybody listening's in the trust tree too. We're all big family, yeah, mate. big fan New Zealand. Oh, but no, but they're Kira, real I'll stupid. <laughs> they're real Come stupid. Come on, do it, do it for New Zealand. How long have you guys been together? Like almost five years. <laughs> so you're going to have some weird names for each other. Yep. Can I say this? That everyone listening probably has some as well, and they're always real stupid. I had an ex girlfriend, I used to call Junior Tanuhu, <laughs> who was, he was the halfback for the Blues. <laughs> she didn't know that though, so she was okay with it. I just thought Junior was cool and Tanu sound cool. I didn't, I didn't think of her like a man at all. I this realized is, it sounds weird. This is an ex girlfriend. So right? it can't be any more yeah. embarrassing than that, Sharon. Like, what, what, was, what was Bryce calling you the other day? Wony wound sock. Wony <laughs> wound sock. That is way worse. He that is way it, worse. I tricked you. He calls it. He, <laughs> he calls it shrewdy or wony or wound sock or wony wony wound sock. And he'll sing me a song and be like wound 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 wony wony wound sock. <laughs> okay, my question is: Does he ever call you wony wony wound sock during? No. What do you think he's... No. Has he ever called out wound sock no. in bed? No. <laughs> There's like other ones as well. There's, um, I call him Nibbleton. Nibbleton Reed. Is that like a stupid character name that I made up? Where does um, it come from? Um, I Oh, because when he eats, he's a nibbler. Like, um, when he eats food, <laughs> and he, he, he's real loud, I, and he's like, he eats like a mouse. <laughs> I'm not I'm not the kind of person that normally has a dirty no. mouth. No! No, I like this, that. I mean, with I food. normally don't go there, but it's no, just, yeah, no, with cool. like food and stuff. Have you ate pizza Nibbleton or whatever? He's a l- it's good. Nibbleton the nibbler. It's good. You took you down a dark path. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Otherwise, our last one is um, is Yogi and Cindy, like Yogi Bear and Cindy. Bear. You guys are weird. And then we call our dog <laughs> Boo Boo, and we're Yogi, Cindy, and Boo Boo. Oh, that's <laughs> adorable. Do you have one of these pet names for your partner? Do you have names like Shaz Dog for your partner? And would you be prepared mm. to share them with us on the edge right now? Would you call us on 0800 The Edge and tell us what your pet names are for each other? Because there'll be plenty of people like you. Go on, I won't judge you. You've got a pet name for your girlfriend. You called it. You said it to me in via text the other day, and oh, I was like, this yes. isn't, "That's a short version of her name." What is it? Her name's Lucy, and he goes, "I'm just down in Fungamata with Lou." And I was like, "I've known Lucy for a long time, and I've never heard anyone call her Lou before." Like a toilet. Sorry, woony woony woon sock. <laughs> Sorry for shortening Lucy's name by one syllable. Oh, eight hundred the edge, Logan. What's your pet name? Uh, for my wife, I call her Jelly Bean. Aww. Aww. Why do you call her Jelly Bean? I don't know. It was just sort of a name that came out once. Yeah, and, and what it, what does she call you? Uh, pork belly. <laughs> So, Logan, yeah. I want to hear this in a sentence. Can you please say, hello, my little jelly bean? <laughs> and can you please really say it in the voice you would say it to your girlfriend? Uh, it's like, hello, my little jelly bean. Oh, that's uh, so cute. Hello, Pokebelly. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Logan, yeah. you're a good man. Thanks, bro. Nolene, what is, what's your pet name? Um, well, I used to call my boyfriend for a while to annoy him. His name's Matthew. I called him Matthew Moo Moo, and he got annoyed at me, so he started calling me Noe Num Num. Aww. Does Aww. he still do that to you now? Uh, well, 
We've broken up, but we're still friends. But he still calls me that to annoy me. As a very single, very lonely person guy, does that does the idea of Nolly Num Nums and what was his no, name? No, it, it <laughs> Maddie Moo Moo. Maddie, Maddie Moo Moo and Nolly Num Nums makes me never want to get into a relationship <laughs> ever again. Single for life. <laughs> Thanks, Nolly. <laughs> Amazing texts coming in. A lot of them are just insults, but they're all pretty funny. I call my wife Fpos because she always buys heaps. Lol, 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 lol. <laughs> lol, 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 lol. My girlfriend calls me Snuffleupagus because I'm a loud e- eater. And then someone else has written in, I call my boyfriend Snuffleupagus because he's got a big nose. Oh, Snuffleupagus was real cute, though. He was a lovable big nose Snuffleupagus seems like a slightly endearing... I, I think that's hilarious. You know who that Snuffleupagus is, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I'm big, on. hairy elephant on Sesame Street. With the big, long... Anyway. I call I call my I, I call my wife loose flap. She hates it. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> my girlfriend calls me Blair because my name is Blair. I call my, <laughs> I call my partner Pumpkin Tits. My partner is a, p- a trucker, and I call him Fluffy. Oh God! And uh, my ex-wife calls me dumbass. Does that count? <laughs> yes, it does. Absolutely. Thank you so much for those suggestions. Some good, some not so good. Yeah, nice. Okay, thank you for that. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. The Dick Smith NRL Auckland Nines were on over the weekend. I got it right, eh? Yeah, that was the perfect title. I've got it wrong a thousand times. Mm. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was genuinely a great time. I had I had my reservations because the sevens are such a shambles and this was twice as big. Mm. Plus it was league fans who have a reputation for being rougher. Yes. And uh, boy was I wrong. It was so well behaved. Everyone was um, everyone was uh, not too drunk. They were just like a good amount of happy. <laughs> they were well dressed in uh, in wacky costumes and stuff and uh, really into their league like they were like connoisseurs of the game who knew all the players names and had like clever heckles and stuff like that kind of the difference between that and the sevens right um, yeah. people actually watched the people cared about the, the rugby <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, people actually knew what was going on I guess it's because the cool thing about it was every single team was a team that people knew really well and they were all yeah. massive stars yeah they, so they, you knew most of the people on the field well some of the teams weren't quite putting forth the best <laughs> best <laughs> rosters you could tell but like Brisbane for example <laughs> Brisbane had their um, best talent and the weird thing is that the Cowboys won. Boy, did I make a big mistake. The first time they played the Warriors, I was actually um, heckling them. And yeah. I wasn't good at it. Because people had good hecklers, heckles specifically for the players and their names. Yeah. I didn't know anyone's name, so I was like trying to heckle the Cowboys based on, like, um, I know they had Toyota as their main sponsor. So I was going, like, Honda Civics are the best. <laughs> and, and I was referencing Clint's car that we give away, obviously. And I also gave him the classic heckle, um, oh, North Queensland sucks, South Queensland's way better. I had no idea. No idea whatsoever. <laughs> I was the worst heckler of all time. So anyway, I, I felt bad, though, that I'd gone there kind of thinking that I was going to meet all these meat sacks. I did meet a couple. I met one guy who was like, bro, bro, I lost my cell phone. And then he dived headfirst into a bin <laughs> to try and get it. And you've made a video of that, eh? Like, you've got a, a, yeah, a video of that on the we're Shop putting together We're putting together a montage, and it'll definitely include this guy, who I thought was just like your classic Kiwi battler from West Auckland, who, um, who hit me up and just wanted to yell stuff out. When he found out we were on the edge, he just had a lot of fun with it. Oh, the oh. edge. Radio station, mate. The edge, the edge, doggy, the edge, cowboys, doggy, doggies, the edge, guy, the warrior guy, ah. the warriors, doggies, the edge. <laughs> ah. <laughs> So that that wow. was that was definitely the most munted dude. He was a doggies fan, and he didn't. He wanted to let us know it. Yeah, he was good fun, and he dived headfirst into a bin. Yeah, you mean the Bulldogs team, eh? The Bulldogs, right. the rug, the rugby league team, the Bulldogs. Oh, shit, dog, don't need for that. Now i i live Chicken. in I live in Auckland, and I'm from New Zealand, and uh, I'm a big Warriors fan. Yeah. So I really enjoyed sitting down with the Warriors fan and cheering for them. But I may have at one point crossed the line and got a little bit too enthusiastic. <laughs> We've got the audio here; it's pretty embarrassing. Go the Warriors! Go the Warriors! Go the Warriors! Yeah! Go the Warriors! Yes! Crush their faces yeah! and smash them into yeah! the dirt! Kill them in the face! Yes! Warriors! <laughs> Kill, kill, kill them in, in the, the face. face. Yeah, not wow. my best line. Not my best line. The weird thing is, I was completely sober as well. I don't know where I <laughs> where I got that sort of anger from. Well, you what? don't need to be drunk to be that into your team. I, I love. I just. I just loved rugby league. I know nothing about it, but I had a really good time. Okay. Well, if you were to give the nines a score out of nine, what would you <laughs> give them? 
I was going to give it a 9 out of 10, but then you already did that gag, so I'm going to go for an 8 out of 9. An 8 out of 9? Yeah. Because of the guy who jumped into the bin, is that what Yeah, the guy who jumped into the bin and was real pumped for the doggies was a bit much. And so. the Warriors didn't win. Yeah, a little bit disappointing there, but still a good time had by nice. Rugby was the winner on the day. Well, good work, New Zealand. We've got that for the next two years at least in Auckland, so there's something to look forward to. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. Big weekend right around Set New Zealand alarm. this weekend. Sorry. Um, homegrown was on down in Wellington. That saw about 10,000 people down there. Um, I think Solomio played in uh, Hawke's Bay over the weekend. Melanie C was in Hawke's Bay from the Spice Girls. The Nines won in Auckland. That was almost 100,000 people. Um, there was also something else on in Auckland called the Lantern Festival, yes. which is a Chinese festival. There was 100,000 people. That's the one that's going to Christchurch this weekend as well. Out of all those things, I was actually away for the weekend, and then when I got back on Sunday night, I managed to go to the Lantern Festival. Anyone else go to Lantern Festival? Yeah. <laughs> you in there, eh, Chang? Yeah. That's your, that's your jam. I went there every night. Way, Chang built the lanterns, too, Matt. Way too romantic for me. It's lovely. <laughs> it's um, it's very, it is very coupley. There are a lot of couples walking mm. around um, Walking around the park. slow, smooching each other. Yeah, looking at lanterns, holding hands. As I was leaving and catching the bus home... Um, you know how big a bus shelter is. It's 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 close proximity. If you're sharing the seat in a bus shelter with someone else, you're quite close to the other person, right? Yeah. Mm. This couple came and they were quite weird looking. I would describe her as um goth emo, like like still hanging on to the whole emo thing. Yep. And him as well, he was just a normal dude, really. He looked a little bit unfortunate, but just a normal dude, give really. Him, give him some sort of, like, box to put him in. He um, was a he was a chubby white dude who was wearing one of those Vietnamese rice paddy hats. Oh, everyone was so wearing So a that. racist yeah. dork. <laughs> <laughs> These two people started having the most intense domestic argument in the bus shelter while me and my girlfriend were sitting right there, right next to him, as if we weren't even there. Did just, Lucy feel uncomfortable? Um, it was more entertaining than uncomfortable, oh, okay. but it would be quite easy to feel uncomfortable, I think. So yeah, especially because you guys are in the honeymoon stage. Yeah. Hello. Another couple of months' time, you guys will be those guys <laughs> in the bus shelter. And then the honeymoon's <laughs> over, and then all the fight comes out. I was listening, though. I was listening very carefully, and I was doing my best. I didn't have the chance to record it, but I was oh. listening to what they were saying, because I knew it would make good uh, a good story for the radio the and next you, day. You couldn't record it because you were too busy holding hands after the lantern <laughs> mission. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going to do? What Clinton is girlfriend is... In a tree. K I S S. He's so immature. He's like, yes, I do have a girlfriend. That is what I'm doing. That is what I'm. That is my plan. Kiss her. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. So I wrote down what happened in this argument, and I thought we could reenact the argument on the show today as like a live a live radio play. No, I'm not even allowed. So obviously, I'm a terrible actress because I'm not on Shorten Street or in this place. Shut up, Chang. You've already got the script in your hand. Hand. You know we're using you. So why am I? Why am I the lady? Because <laughs> it's funnier like that. So you are the lady. There is uh, nothing yeah. funnier than an Asian pretending argument. to be a woman. <laughs> and guy, you're going to be the unfortunate boyfriend. Okay. Yes. yes okay. Sir. Now oh, uh, you have the scripts in your hands. This could go horribly wrong. But when you're ready, Chang, you have the first line. <laughs> okay. You take it away. Now, Chang, don't get all giggly like you normally do. Okay, just nail it. I'll just don't look at you. Then I'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's not very. Oh, hang on. No. Who interrupted me? <laughs> Bring it down a little bit. Start. Okay. Start a little bit cooler. It's not very nice for me, you know. <laughs> Shh, stop laughing. Sorry, go ahead. It's not very nice for me, you know. How about I pretend to be you? No, don't do that. No, I'm going to belittle your opinion. Angrier, okay. No, I'm going to belittle your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry on. Hang on, hang on. Doing a good job. Yeah. Angry and woman. No, I'm going to belittle your opinion all night. Then I'm going to make you feel so stupid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Take a, take a breath back into character. Hmm. Angry lady. Then when I talk about it, I am going to leave you, give you a fake apology. The most condescending smirk. Oh, but... <laughs> no, I had enough. Give me my backpack. But I... I am going to catch a bus home alone. <laughs> I love you. Bye. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and that is the dramatic recreation of the argument I witnessed last that night. That wasn't public displays of affection. That was public displays of aggression. Yeah. And scene. <laughs> I feel like me and Chang really took you to a place there. You could really feel you the sounded, Lantern Festival come you alive. You sounded like a dead person. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been in this situation before? Have you been stuck in the crossfire of someone else's awkward public <laughs> domestic that you'd like to share with us? Give us a call now on 0800 The Edge or text it to 3 to 3343. What awkward argument did you witness? Was it at the supermarket? Was it at the Lantern Festival? Was it the Nines? 
what were you stuck in the crosshairs of? Two people in a row off different numbers just texted, Oh my God, Chang sounds like Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> and you were Kermit. Guy, you're Kermit. We're going to quit Kermit now. Yes. Shame, what a burn. Uh, if you just joined us, you missed um, a dramatic recreation of something I witnessed in town last night, played by Guy Williams yep. and Chang Hung. Hello. <laughs> Chang. Believe it or not, neither of us are professional actors, but Chang, I reckon we nailed that, bro. Chang, High five. Chang, <laughs> we didn't end up getting any phone calls from our phone topic about um, where you saw a public domestic <laughs> because people were too concerned about your um, your dramatic recreation of an angry woman. Yeah. My horrible acting. For the for one, we have Nikki on the phone. <laughs> Nikki, what did you think of Chang's acting? Oh, look, I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember Miss Piggy, but it was a dead <laughs> ringer. Dead ringer for Miss Piggy. For those of you who missed it, this was Chang. It's not very nice for me, you know. How about I pretend to be you? No, don't do that. No, I'm going to belittle you. Angrier, your angrier. Okay. No, I'm going to belittle you. <laughs> <laughs> no, carry on. Hang on, hang on. Doing a good job. Hang on. Angry and woman. No, I'm going to belittle your opinion all night. Then I'm going to make you feel so stupid. Okay. <laughs> you are Miss Piggy. You are. Nikki, you're totally right. He is Miss Piggy. Do you reckon that's the last time we ever get him to do any acting on the show, though? Let's be honest. <laughs> on the first of yeah, many. Yeah, I think you sh- so should have done it, Sharon. I know. Nobody nobody believes in my abilities, Nikki, but thank you so much for calling. <laughs> Just hold the line and we're going to hook you up with our must-have CD this week. Mark, what did you think of Chang's acting? <laughs> Chang, don't leave, I, mate. He sounded like Adam Sandler in his movie when he plays him in his foot. <laughs> what, Jack and Jill? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's just movie. That is, that is not a compliment at all because that is one of the worst movies ever. Uh, it's good to know, though, that we could one day get you an acting role, Chang. Yeah. Well done. Someone texted and said, Chang sounds like a mix of Angry Elmo and Cookie Monster. <laughs> I like Cookie! <laughs> 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 Nailed okay, it, bro. <laughs> Maybe okay. can, you please, can you please say, um, C is for cookie, it's quite enough for me, in your uh, voice. what? C is for cookie, it's quite enough for me. C is for cookie! Something is enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't oh even God. remember the thing. Now, you are so tragic. Guy, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Um, we've been having turns throwing into this amazing intro that Guy and I made for Win Clint's car by saying, you all know what time it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think it's Guy's turn to do that today. So, Guy, can you please give us your best... Uh, you already know what it is. Oh. It's time for New Zealand's favourite low-cost game show. Win. Clint's car. That was pretty good. That was you, good. You looked a little possessed, but tomorrow I want some more gravel in that. What time is it? Okay, I'll, okay. Work, I'll work on my gravel, I guess. It is time. <laughs> it is time. Just have some whiskey and a dart tonight, bro. <laughs> um, we're gonna Don't do that. Don't <laughs> encourage Sorry. other people to smoke, Sharon. <laughs> what is a You've dart? You've changed. What is a dart? <laughs> Never mind. Now, what we're going to do right now is play Win Clint's Car, Yay. which is when we ask you a question, you have to give nine answers in ten seconds, and if you can do that, then you'll win yourself Ronda the Honda. Clint's car. Let's do it. Let's I just play pause, the game. I just pause to see if Clint had anything to add. But I don't have anything to say. As I usual, nothing. There, there, there is, <laughs> there's no backup car. Someone said to me on the weekend, you're just doing this A because you've got a new car. That's the best thing about it. There's no plan B. There's no backup car and I just moved to a new house which is no longer in walking distance to the edge. So we, yeah, haven't, we haven't thought this through at all. Let's play the game. Andrew, are you ready for your question from Guy? I am indeed. All right. Whoa, he Here sounds we go. confident Here we go. actually. Andrew, name yeah. nine breeds of dog. Go. Chihuahua, Dachshund, a Great Dane, a Labrador, Retriever, uh, a Shih Tzu, a Wowser, a, um, a, 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 a Mountain Dog, a Bernese Mountain Dog. Stop, Andrew. The time stop. is over. Andrew, that, oh. was, that was incredible. Did he get there? Was he not enough? We are was going to have to deliberate with Chang, the referee. We may no, 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 just no. have given away. He got eight. We may. He I was, don't know. He was halfway through, though. Like, did he have eight and a half? Or We've got to go to the ref, I reckon. An- hang on, Andrew. Andrew, are you there? Yes. Did you say a wowser? A wowser is a dog. Is a yeah, wowser a, a wowser is a dog. We're going, we're going to the ref, Clint. This could be it. This could be oh, it. This and- is this is so poorly thought through that Clint could have just lost his car. <laughs> we've got to go, <laughs> Chang. Can you get the audio, mate? We've got to get Chang to get the audio, and we're going to see if we've just given it away. Sorry to the other callers, but that could be it. Wow. How are you going to get home, though, bro? Because I can't drop you off. <laughs> Andrew's in Auckland too. He could come and get the car this afternoon. Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> okay. The Waiway Express we'll come back, is we'll come all back yours. After this. I've got a sore stomach because I'm so excited.
because I like, held my breath for a long time after what just happened. <laughs> because we are playing when when Clint's, Clint's car, car right now. I'm not now. playing the heavy music right now. And um, I'm not but, playing the heavy but music. But everybody I knows to. what time it is. You have to play it. So here we go. You know what time it is. You didn't even play it. You're a loser. <laughs> All right. It's You're time for New Zealand's favourite low-cost game show. Win. Clint's car. Now, guys. There's not enough. Ma- I'm quite angry because there's not enough magnitude to the situation. No, there is, mate. This is big. What do you? This is like Michael Jordan Game Seven type stuff, where it's all on the line. How do you think it happened? <laughs> Mum, spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> that reference almost made sense. <laughs> okay, so Andrew was on before. Hi, Andrew. Hi, how you doing? Good. I still want someone to text in and confirm whether a wowser is a dog. It is a dog. What What kind of dog is a wowser? It's a wowser. That's what type of dog it is. It's like so a it's, wowser. It's, it's, it's a, a nice dog. It's a West Highland Terrier and a schnauzer. Okay, here's, a, here's my question for you, Andrew. Are you some kind of dog breeder? No, but it turns out we've got a dog about 12 months ago. I've been walking the dog every day at the dog park, so that did help. <laughs> See, this is like Good a dream you, question for you. I'm quite confident. We've sent this away to Chang to deliberate, and he's brought back an instant replay for us. I'm quite confident that you only got to eight, but I don't know for sure. Andrew, do you think you won it? I'm not certain. I would love to win it. It would be perfect because um, I've got a son who's 18, and he hasn't got a car, and he needs a car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Run to the Honda would be the perfect dad, car for your car. My dad <laughs> has a 27-year-old son called Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> five years ago, he took to Tower Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, but there is a difference between Andrew's son and your son, and the fact is that Andrew likes his son and your dad hates you, so it's fine. Hey, my dad doesn't hate me. (laughs) So let's have a look. Let's have a listen now, Andrew. I cross my fingers for you to see how you got on with Win Clint's car. Here it is. Name nine breeds of dog. Go. Chihuahua, Dachshund, a Great Dane, a Labrador, Retriever, uh, a Shih Tzu, a Wowser, a, um, a, 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 a Mountain Dog, a Bernie's Mountain Dog. Okay, that's it there. Official producer Chang, the official decision is... I reckon he got it. I think he got it as well. I don't think he got it. The second, the oh. last question, he, he kind of doubled it. Okay. What, he, what do you mean he doubled it? He said something else and then he added another title to it. So and the buzzer has gone then. Yeah. No. When so, the yeah. buzzer goes, yeah. that's when it's over. He only had I eight. Thought that he, I thought he, he only had eight. I thought he had those and then he said that other one on top of it and no, that was ten. I, I listened to like quite a few times. He only had eight. The ninth one came uh, in after the buzzer. Cut to the chase, Chang. Have I got a car to drive home in tonight? Yes, but Come well, on. well, no. Yeah, Clint still has a car. So, so sorry, Andrew, you did not win it. Oh. But we're going to give another person a chance. Okay, well, mm. Andrew, thank you so much for uh, playing. We're sorry that you're not going to have a new car for your son, but maybe you can try again tomorrow. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you, you so much. Bye. Oh. Bloody good effort. It's very close, though. I thought he would, too. <sighs> Which hopefully Once a day, I, I run the risk of having to part with. It, this is such a stupid idea, but it's a lot of fun at the same <laughs> it time. It still is. It's time for New Zealand's oh. favourite low-cost game show. Win. Clint. Come Okay, last one for the day. Okay, who do we have on the line? Kylie. Kylie, welcome along to the show. Hi. You heard how close we were to giving away Ron to the Honda before. Are you feeling lucky? How are you feeling? Um, I think Clint's pretty lucky because my general knowledge is not that great. Oh. Oh. It's not general knowledge. Kylie. It could be very specific. Kylie, ready to play? Yes. Let's okay. do this. Kylie, name nine Harry Potter characters. Go. Uh, Harry, Hermione, uh, Hagrid. Um, no. Dumbledore. Oh, yeah. This is easy. Dumbledore. <laughs> Wrong. Sorry, Kylie. No luck oh, for you this afternoon. It was an easy one too. It was, but yeah. you, you said to know, you said to name the entire Weasley family, and you would have been sorted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a Harry Potter fan. No, oh. but there'll be thousands of people around the country right now going, "Oh, why did you give that question to me? I know so much about Harry Potter. I know all the spells." Well, Kylie, sorry about that, babe. But uh, maybe you can try winning Clint's car another day because at this rate, we'll still be doing it in November. <laughs> <laughs> the world's longest running radio feature continues <laughs> till tomorrow at least. Hi, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Kia ora and welcome oh. to Chang Hung. Hello, how again. Are, how are you? Good, good, good. Chang, you went to the Lantern Festival on the weekend, right? Yes, I did. I loved it. I took mum and dad there last night. Um, saw the fireworks at the end to end the uh, Lantern Festival. What's your favourite food to eat? Do you have any insider tips on what to get? It was not Asian that I got last night. It was snails. Snails. So the snails as well. Yeah. The snails cooked in curry. Yeah. No, Green curry. I got, no, I got uh, yes. garlic on it. 
Oh, okay. So, yeah, maybe a different Chang, do you speak Mandarin or Cantonese? A little bit of Cantonese. A little bit of Cantonese. Because, yeah. fun fact, the people who organised the festival actually wanted Chang to be the host of the festival for the weekend, but he said no. Why would you say no to that? Because I had plans. I had your, nines. Your plans to were to go to the landing <laughs> festival. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, no. I took mum and dad there yesterday, and uh, it was a scary thing, um, because... Took dad, dad doesn't get out of the house much mm. And then I went to a store to buy some food Because there's so many people And then got mum and dad to stand on the corner So they don't get lost mm-hmm. The next ne- minute I turn around And dad <laughs> was like Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get let that go You did not do that <laughs> Okay Just dropped a Nick Minute into a conversation Did I just get into a time machine? Like how many years ago was Nick Minute? Because it was <laughs> it's like, not last not year Not long enough ago Because it still sucks At least three it's three years old at yeah, least yeah. Okay, let's just it's, go- almost, it's almost good though It's like going like What's up? Like it's okay now. It's retro. <laughs> but next thing it happens, I went back with the food to mum and dad. And it's like mum was like, "Oh, you can't believe what just happened. Your dad nearly got pickpocketed." Wow! Oh, so someone yeah, tried to so, rob your dad. So dad had his wallet on his back pocket, mm-hmm. and two guys walked past and touched, like grabbed the pocket. And dad was like, "What's happening?" And then he just grabbed the wallet. Mm-hmm. Two guys. Two guys. Yes. So two one guys. picks the pocket, and the other, obviously the next one passes it to the next person. Did your dad know oh. any martial arts? No. No. He didn't okay. stop them. He's just like, "Hey, ho!" And then and the, those. So guys they thought like, he knew martial yeah. arts because he was like, "Hey, ho ha!" Yeah. So so yeah, and then they they left him alone. So yeah. Wow. So they like caught him red-handed, and they didn't even like try to do anything as he walked off. No, it's like sorry, sir. No, no, nothing. That must have been so awkward. Yeah. Sorry, sir. I tried to mm. rob you, yeah. but you caught me. So mm. now I'm apologising. Mm. So now you can keep the wallet. My gift to you. <laughs> wow. So you caught a you you caught my dad. My dad. A ca- crime yeah. in action. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had anything like that before? You ever walked in on someone robbing your house? Have you ever walked in on someone with your girlfriend? What's that to do with a crime? No, <laughs> no but no. it is. It's like people get caught red-handed doing stuff all the time. Mm. Clint's right, like people cheating or seeing somebody in a place they said they wouldn't be. Or I want to hear people's stories. 0800 the edge or text into 3343. <laughs> Tell us when you were caught red-handed. <laughs> yeah, do that. Thanks, guy. <laughs> Give us a call. <laughs> People are laughing because I just threw the call. This is just an in-house joke. If you that don't was, get it, you won't get it. I don't get it. Call us at 0800 The Edge right now. Hey, the phone's lit up. You did a good job. There you go. But, Sean, you've got a good story about when you caught somebody red-handed or you got caught red-handed. Yeah. yeah. Cool. What, what's the story, mate? <laughs> what happened, uh, man? <laughs> uh, I got caught red-handed, actually. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about it. Um, I was buying a packet of cigarettes and I asked for... Uh, park Drive, and then I thought, "No, nah, I'll get some Port Royal." Mm-hmm. And Classic. he left the he left the Park Drive up on the counter, and I thought I could slip it from him and get it in my pocket. <laughs> uh, I got out of the shop, but like two hours later, cops were knocking on my door. And, <laughs> how did they yeah, ca- How did they catch you? Uh, it turned out he's got the best cameras in town. <laughs> <for a dairy>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, serves you right. Um, what happened yeah. with it? Did you go to jail? Are you in prison um, right now? Are you calling nah, us from the cells? I've got caught. On Wednesday, and <laughs> basically, I just have to pay reparation. Uh, do you reg- say sorry? Do you regret your, cr- your crime? Pardon? Do you regret it? Yeah and no. I was. I needed some smokes. But you were already <laughs> buying smokes. You were going to get some. Yeah, and then I got some free ones, and now I have to pay for them still, so... You know what, Sean? I think you should just never, ever change your mind again, because it's way too confusing for you. <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst criminal I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> wow. Well, like thanks for your call, Sean. I'm glad you got there in the end. Thanks, Sean. Wouldn't it have been so funny if he'd got all the way home after he'd just stolen, like, a 30 gram, and he's like, I've got no filters or papers, <laughs> and the cops turn up, and he couldn't even smoke it. Oh, classic. Smoker's humour. Candy, what is your story about? <laughs> uh, well, actually, a burglar got um, not so much caught. Uh, the nephew came home from sports, and there's a strange guy roaming around the house. Yeah. And he just assumes it's his big brother's friend and offers the bugger a cup of tea. Oh. <laughs> he tried to make the burglar a cup of tea. Yeah, he said, oh, mate, you want a cup of tea? And he goes in the kitchen. Next thing, the guy disappears. Yeah. So he just assumed, oh, maybe he's gone toilet or something. By that time, the big brother walks in and um, he asked, Josh asked him, oh, where's your mate gone? Said, what, mate? The guy who was in here was um, down the hallway. Oh, my God. Oh, Did bugger he? me. So, yeah, no, it's a bit of a standing family <laughs> joke. Whenever visitors come, Josh has to go and ask them if they want a cup of tea. Candy, you're awesome. Where do you, what part, can I ask what part of New Zealand you live in? 
I'm in the great Monaco city, Manilewa. But don't you want some Rotorua, so that makes it a bit, um, yeah. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much for calling, Kenny. Hold the line. We're going to hook you up with a prize as well, okay? Oh, oh thank you. First of all, did the guy get anything, the guy that was in the hallway? Did he steal no, anything? No, he didn't, thank goodness. But oh, that would have been even bloody then. worse. <laughs> All right, hey, thanks for your call. How New Zealand is that, eh? The dude is getting robbed, and he goes, do you want a cup of tea, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, thanks for your call. Sky, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Gossip. Gossip. Scandal. Romance. Romance. Sexy. Romance. Six, six, six. News. News. Clint and the Glossies. All right, gather around the wireless whanau. It is that time of the week. The time of the week when all the glossy, beautiful people in the magazines come out to shine. They put back on the shelves. They sell you a lot of crap. Uh, and you believe a lot of it. Maybe it's a pain for you to head to Shell and shell out the... How much is it? Three dollars, four dollars thirty for a woman's day. Maybe now you've got me to read through these for you, so That's, you don't have to. Four dollars thirty is a great price for something that lets you know all the things that women need to know in their day. Do you know what's better than four dollars thirty? What free? Here we go. <laughs> Starting off as we did last week with uh, Woman's Day on yep. the cover, uh, Chappelle Corby uh, over there. Doesn't she look nice? Yeah, she does. She um, has a friend who was on the trip, a woman who was on that original Bali trip with her. She has finally broken. Her silence and said it should have been me in prison. So I guess we've solved the who done it. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit late. A little bit late. She's claiming I'm... it now. She's out of jail. She's also getting a headline. She is also a semi-attractive um, white woman, and I think she's looking to cash in. That's you know the what? worst that is... woman in the world. No, that's really misleading because if you actually read the article, which I did just before, she didn't say it should be her. She says it could have been her. Sharon, but... we're not in, we're not into reading the articles. We're just looking <laughs> at the headlines. See, that's that's tricky. That's tricky. Scary Spice is always also in the Woman's Day this week. She's on a boat, um, hooking up with a chick and feeling up each other's. Boobs and stuff, and there's pictures of it, so that was cool. Um, was it was it sensual? Uh, if you're into that sort of thing, not yep. really. She's quite an old celeb. I it don't know why they. It wasn't that sensual in one bit because like her friend literally is prodding at her yeah, nipple, they're poking it. <laughs> like she's poking <laughs> it. Ooh, no one that. wants their nipple poked. Next, we're going to a uh, new idea. Uh, in the new idea this week, a fair scandal. <gasps> yep. Barack Obama what? is having an affair what? What? with Beyonce. No oh, way. Girl. No, you didn't. Now, I, again, I didn't read this story because it's more juicy if I don't. <laughs> so let's just take it on face value. But that is a real headline. Scandal affair, Man. Beyonce and Obama. You know what they say? When she's been drinking, she's been drinking. She gets filthy up on in it. <laughs> She's been grinding on presidential wood. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Also in the new idea this week, our very own Guy Williams features. He's in there. Are you serious? Yeah, you're in the magazine. Oh, I, can't, I forgot I did that. You are um, awkwardly... Th- this is a new low for me, eh? You're in an awkward stage tussle over a basketball <laughs> with old flame Rose Matafeo. Who oh, just, who awkward. Des- who describes working with her ex-boyfriend as a Jerry and Elaine from Seinfeld situation. The- look, look at that what? picture. That is so awkward. What do they tell you to do for that picture? Here I am, just fight over the basketball, which we are doing. <laughs> this is so... Here I am mocking the crap liberties from New Zealand and the new idea, and then I show... This is a new low for my career. You're one no, of them. It, you should be riding that wave, though, because... Can I read that article? Yes. You, you should ride that ex-girlfriend wave, though, eh? Because then people will know that you can actually score hot girls. <laughs> yeah, or score a girl. That was the new idea. The... <laughs> The last magazine I picked up this week is um, That's Life, because last week it became my favourite. It's this such one, a good one. This is the one that features no celebrities and really weird real-life stories. They pay $600 for a story. It's called That's Life. It's not worth $600 to pay for your embarrassing life problems. It's embarrassing to put these things in a magazine. On the cover, Kiwi Medical Mystery. I grew two extra breasts. <laughs> Spoiler alert, she didn't, and you can't. She just got Aww. some swelling. <laughs> that is I got so excited. gross. Mm. Is it worth humiliating if, yourself about your two breast story for 600 bucks? If you grew an extra two breasts, though, then you'd be like a cow. <laughs> that right People there, be milking you. ladies and gentlemen, is another edition of Clinton the Glossy. So informative. So I know, good. Right? I know, right? Yeah, you didn't cover off what Adam Perori had for breakfast, because no. there's a big, like, two-page spread on that. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was at his not. favorite cafe, Queenies or something. Thanks, Clint. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Itch. There you go. That's the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Guy is still reading an article about himself. <laughs> <laughs> Did really, you find a little bit more of really yourself in there? He really has got dumber. Yeah. No, I've got another. I've got another quote in here. This is not. This is actually not too bad. I'm quite proud of this. 
Wait, John wait, O'Prior wait, 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 says, everyone on the team's main jo- goal is to make the best show each week. However, Guy Williams jokes, this hasn't always been the case, deadpanning. We've done a lot of years where this wasn't our goal. We were all just trying to get on to better programs. <laughs> but now we actually want to stay where we are. So I'm quite stoked with that. I wasn't joking. That was sincere. We're actually, we previously were just trying to get onto better programs. And it's now been, it's going been well. over 30 minutes in this podcast, and we're still talking about the one small article you did in the new idea mm. this week. I'm pretending like I'm embarrassed by it, but secretly I'm very proud. <laughs> you're going you, to send that home for your mum to put in her yeah. scrapbook. My, my mum will hate like... this so much. My mum hates women's magazine, and she's going to hate this so hard. Ha ha, loser, you're proud of your own success. <laughs> That's the podcast. Have a great... Um, yeah, uh, you suck <laughs> at being good at stuff. Thanks we'll, for listening, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for another podcast. Bye. The Guys Sharon and Clint Podcast.